Hey, they take them apart now. I stayed in California. I married outside of my religion. I spend every waking moment. Chalo, chalo, hello, hello, welcome. Rafael, hello, hello. Can you hear me okay, Raf? Welcome, welcome, Raf. Can you hear me okay? Microphone check. One, two, one, two. Hello, Chalo, welcome. I thought you had left me. Hello, good evening, teacher. Good evening, good evening. How you doing, the Chalo? Internet is slow. It's slow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. All right. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. And how was your day? You know, it was. I want to say that it was hot. It's usually hot. Don't tell me you're wearing you're wearing you're wearing a Zulutan or San Miguel. No, or you're not, the you're, La Union. 
No, here <laughs> in Apopa, it's just so hot, man. It's been so hot. I didn't even, you know, I didn't remember last year being this hot. Yeah. I could only imagine Usulutang. Now, Chalo, you have lived in Usulutang <laughs> forever, right? All your life. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, so when you when you visit another place that's cool, and you stay like the whole day, and then you go back to Usulutan, do you feel that like a big difference? Yes, because when I go to San Salvador, yeah, I not sweat, I not sweat all day. <laughs> okay, I I work in the trip, um, uh, buying something, or doing many things, and not sweat. But when he, here in Sultan, just start working five minutes and I'm sweating on. And it, it, all the sweat. <laughs> my teacher is wet. Oh my God, I could imagine. Okay, all right. So yeah, there is that. Hello, Diana. Hello, Maricela. Jarvin. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Hello, hello. Josue, welcome aboard, sir. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, good evening guys. Um, let me see. Penultimate, penultimate day. We have one more day to go, and then we go on vacation. You know, I wish school was like that when I was growing up. But we would have to go to school for such a long time, and then we would get, like, summer break. And the summer was only about maybe... I, I, as I remember, it's maybe two months, June and July, and then we would we would go back to school in August. But that was a long time ago, long time ago. Hello, everybody. Long time ago. All right, uh, we have a class. Uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to break it up like into two things. I wanted to talk about some of the things that we have been seeing, kind of like a review, well, actually a review of the stuff that we have been seeing um, throughout the modules. And then right after we complete that, I wanted to talk to you guys about the final exam. How many of you guys in the platform have completed section four? Section four, done. How many of you guys? How many of you guys are like halfway through section four or about to complete section four? Maricela, Maricela, well done, well done. Diana, well done. Me. Okay. How many of you guys have gone to the final exam already? Has anybody been to the final exam? Okay. What we can do is we can review it. I finished. Okay. All right. Good, Josue. Good, Josue. What we can do is we can review a little bit of section four and then go right into the final exam and see, you know, if maybe we can do a couple. I think it's four sections, A, B, C, D. No, I, so there's more than I, 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 let me go ahead and go back to it. Let me see. Uh, let's see if we go into the section, let's see the final exam. Let me see how many sections we have on here. Uh, we have A, B, C, D, and E. So we have five sections. You know what? We can actually do a couple of these sections together. We already did one. We can do two, and then the section review that we already completed, and then tomorrow we finish it off with the last two, just in case you guys need a little bit of help there. If you guys don't need the help, that's okay, right? We can just use it as a review. All right, so we can do that. And I also have, uh, do you guys remember Madeline asked about why the word right was being used? You guys remember? Well, I wanted to cover it real quick. If she comes in, you know, we can review it again, just, you know, for, for everybody and just to make sure that we all get to see it. The reason right was being used was because of the sentence that had to do with sleep. And so there's different ways that you can use right. Uh, there's the noun, the adjective, the verb, and the adverb. 
So the way we were using it yesterday was an adverb. And let's go ahead and look in the adverb section. And you guys will be able to see it. Here it is. And so it was being used as true. So here we go. Um, so there's a couple of ways that you can use it. If you're using it this way, you can say something like go right to the end of the road. It doesn't mean that you're going to take a right on the road. It means that you're going to go through the road, through the, you know, through the town or through the colonia. And then you're going to go all the way to the end. And then, you know, it's uh, you're going to find whatever you're looking for, either, uh, you know, the train station or something like that. Um, there is the negative form of saying we don't have to go right into town. So literally what you're saying is um, we don't have to go into it, right? We don't have to uh, go into the middle. We don't have to go into the center. Uh, so whenever you use it in this way, what you're trying to imply is that, you know, you're going to go and meet like maybe to the middle or to the center of the town. And so here it's telling you, we don't have to go right into it, right? We don't have to go into the middle of the town. And then the format that we were using, which was with sleep, was I slept soundly right through the night, okay? I slept through the night. I slept right through the alarm. And then, so that's what we're trying to say here. Um, you slept right along, you slept right through, you slept right around. So these are the different sections. So um, you can say that it is, uh, besides being an adverb or besides being used as an adverb, it fits into the category of being used in a direction or a side, right? So you can say it, you can say it fits along those ways. So um, it's an adverb and that's why it was being used in sleep. And this is the way that it's used. Hello, Madeline. I was just Hello. explaining the right. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So I was able to. I was. I was able to get here, and the explanation so far, real quick, is because we were using it as an adverb, and what we were gonna use, or we're using it, we are using right in connections with true. So. The idea is that we say, we slept right through. And so the correct or the full sentence would, would, would say or would sound something like this. I slept right through the night. Right is, is actually being used to modify slept and through and that's why you are able to use it now what you cannot use in this particular format is left because it is not being used as a right left or middle it is being used as you are doing something and you are not able to, or you don't have any control over it. You slept right through it. You didn't hear the alarm. And so there's an action that you are not being able to, uh, you have not been able to, to, to perform. And so um, that is the reason why there's the adverb. So um, another thing that we were talking about is that there's so many ways to use right. Uh, there's the nouns, uh, adjectives, the verbs, and the adverbs. And within that, you have to take into consideration what you're talking about. Because if you are talking uh, in regards to right or wrong, or true and correct, you can also use it in that way. But in some of these cases, you cannot use left and center as well, because you're not using it in terms of position or in terms of pointing to a certain uh, to a certain side. 
So you just have to take a look at what the statement, the phrase, or the sentence is saying, and then based on that, identify if you're trying to say whether it's true or correct, um, whether it's a suitable uh, action. Now, if you are using it for sides, then in that case, you can use right, left, and center or opposite, right? Right or opposite, which it would be the left. And so that's pretty much all I could find. But let me tell you that there's so many ways of using right that it just leaves you, uh, just look at, look at the whole page of how many ways you can use it. You can use it as true and correct. You can use it as suitable. Um, you can use it for problem. Uh, you can use it for uh, morale or uh, morally. You can use it to emphasize. Uh, you can use it for health. Uh, you can use it in socially uh, correct terms. Uh, there's the collocation. Uh, there's the collocations that you can also work on. There's so many ways that you guys can use. Right? It is. It's just. You know, it was mind boggling to find all of this and for you guys to be able to know it. Now, all you guys have to do is pretty much type in the word right in, in Google. And I think you guys will be able to get the same information. So hopefully, you know, moving forward, that helps a little bit. But look at look at all of that. Right. Uh, exactly. Immediately. Correctly. Entonces, para decir ahorita, you know how we say ahorita in El Salvador, we say ahorita. And a lot of people around Latin America don't know what ahorita means. Right now. Right. For us in El Salvador, that's what it means. But if you go, for example, uh, to Dominican Republic, they don't know what that means. And so uh, in English, there is a way that you can say ahorita, right? You could say right now. And that literally translates to ahorita right now ahorita and then so so for us I, I thought that was pretty i thought that was pretty good because a lot of people tell us oh ahorita no existe like in mexico they don't use ahorita uh, in dominican republic they don't use it in colombia they don't use it uh, there's a lot of places that don't know what ahorita means and so um, if you guys ever take calls and you guys have to deal with people in the United States that are from Venezuela, that are from Peru, that are from Chile. And you guys say, ahorita le ayudo. They won't know what that means. Right. So, so, you know, just to give you guys a heads up. All right. So that's, that's the word, right? Uh, we go back and let's go back into our little review. Um, did I show you guys, did I show you guys the website? I wasn't showing you guys the website. I'm so sorry. Oh my God, now I feel bad. I don't think that's the first time that I, there it is. And here it is, look at guys. Look at Madeline, look at, this is heaven for right. Everything that has to do with right, the different versions of how to use right, when to use right, how to use them as adjectives. They even right. They even tell you how to sound it correctly, right? Hey, are you the one driving? Right. Yes, I am. Right. And then so it tells you how to say it if you're going to answer it in that way. El equivalente al bien, verdad? ¿Cómo estás tú? Bien, bien. No, no, that's not the way you use it. A ver, a ver. So, so that's it. That's it for right. Uh, let's go back into our presentation. And this is where we started. This is how we started. We started with infinitives and gerunds. Remember that they always usually come in pairs. If we're talking about infinitives, it usually also brings gerunds around. And if we're talking about gerunds, you will also always find infinitives. So uh, there's actually a really, really big chance that when you guys are going through sentences and phrases, or you guys are talking about infinitives and gerunds, they come together, right? They come in pairs. Um, 
we were talking about the infinitives and how they are really easy, right? Especially with infinitives because all you need is one word. Do you guys remember the word for the infinitives? Two. That's it. Two. Yeah, Jarvin, thank you very much. Yeah, two. That's it. That's all we need, right? And then so the gerund gets a little bit more complicated because it's a verb plus the ing. However, there is a rule behind the verb plus ing being recognized as a gerund. If it doesn't fall under these categories, then it is just a verb plus the ing, which is recognized as verb ing, verbing, right? Verb plus ing, verbing. And so how can you tell whether it's a gerund that's being used or just the term verb plus the ing? Well, it's actually pretty common sometimes. If you see a word that ends with ing at the beginning of the sentence and it is the subject, that word is a gerund. It is not a verb plus ing. If it is the direct object, for example, he hates waking up early, that is not a verb plus the ing, that is a gerund. The subject complement, an object complement, object of prepositions, and object of possessives. Under these circumstances, we are talking about a gerund and not the verb plus the ing. All right? Running, waking, repeating, writing, improving, bossing. Those are the examples that we use. And the rule behind that is that you have the definition, which is a noun ending in ing that has been formed from a verb. Uh, for example, eat gets converted to eating. Think gets converted to thinking. Play turns into playing and paint turns into painting. However, how that word is then situated, right, also has something to do in regards to the gerund. So this is not just the fact that it's a noun ending in ing. Now we're talking about the properties, which is you have a normal noun and a gerund can be modified by an adverb and take an object. So what happens is you have the adverb of carefully that now takes paint and turns it into painting, turn it into a gerund. And so what is painting or what is being painted? The fence, which is the direct object. In these particular cases, you have a gerund in your hands, ladies and gentlemen. And so these are the examples. And it could be a couple of these words, right? Work, working, play, playing, study, studying. Okay. We have some more infinitives and this is how you see them. We usually see the verbs plus the infinitive and we usually always see verbs plus infinitive or you guys can see the verb plus the infinitive plus the gerund or verb plus infinitive or a gerund, right? And then we have some examples that you guys can see. To agree, right? Or to know. That's all you would need to do. Attempting to would be another way to say it. Beginning to. Those are other examples that you guys can see. Now, with infinitives, you can indicate purpose, subject, or direct object of a sentence, right? And so here are some examples of that. To indicate the purpose of the action, 
you can say something like, he bought some flowers to give to his wife. Or you can say, I will lock the door to prevent theft. All right. We also went through some vocabulary words that we covered. Once we did that, we started looking at the noun clauses. Kind of like a quick review. All of this was part of module one. The identification and the explanation definitions, right, of the noun clause. So when somebody asks you, what is a noun clause? You can say a noun clause is a clause with a subject and verb that functions as a noun, right? And then you have the examples. Whatever you wish is my command. And that is a noun clause. A couple of examples that you guys can see here. From there, we actually went through a couple of identifications. How can you identify that you are using a noun clause? Well, there are some words that usually start off and give indication. When you start off by saying who, whom, whose, which, that, if, whether, what, and when are all examples of a noun clause being or about to be used. And some of the examples here are what Billy did, that he couldn't swim, that he refused to take lessons. We use what Billy did again, and that Billy drowned are all examples. Give you a quick explanation. It keeps on going with the non clauses, how they function, more examples, and then we started talking about the past models and phrasal models to describe obligations in the past. And this section focused on you guys using words like should have, was supposed to, had to, and needed to. And these were all of the model verbs that we were using and the explanations, right? Whenever you guys use can or could is the ability, can, could, and may is permission, should is advice, obligation, must or have to, and the possibility might, may, could, and can. And so depending on which word you use here, there's a, there's, I'm gonna say that the bar keeps going either higher or lower in regards to the possibility. Might is the lowest in the bar. So are you going to the party? I might go. That means that you're really not gonna go. Are you going to the party? I may. I may, I may go. That means that the possibilities are getting better. Like, you know, 25, 30%. Could, 50, 55, 60. And can, that one is a little bit, you know, it's a little bit higher up. And it usually means that 80%, there's a big chance that you are going to go, right? Yeah, I think I can make it. All right, that's 80%. That's good percentage for me. We kept on talking about models and obligations. Um, we got to the present forms, the past forms, and how to use those with examples. Uh, we talked about the auxiliary verbs being used. We talked about when to use mustn't versus don't have to. All right. We talked about the verbs being used with problems. And we talked about some of these phrases as well, face a problem, combat a problem, tough problems, right? We discussed the phrasal verbs. Ah, that was pretty good. We talked about the modifiers, okay? And how we line them up. And if we're using these on a sentence, then this is the way that they have to be formed in order. Right, order number one through 17 starts off with determiners and it ends with purpose. 
And some of those examples you guys can see. Um, an example of a determiner would be the, your, his, or hers. And some examples of purpose would be like, you know, party or work. All right, let's see. From there, well, we, we it's the same thing. We got into time clauses, which is, I think, the latest. Here we discussed words that we can use with time clauses when, as, until, after, while, since, as soon as, and before. And we went through these. How can you use them? how you should use them and what are the only ways to use them, right? As soon as or once, before, which means earlier than, after, until or till, since, ever since, whenever, and then the two rules. One of them was the comma, whenever you start a phrase with a clause, you're going to need a comma at the beginning of that sentence. And the example is while I was recovering in the hospital, comma, my friends visited me. And the second rule was the re how do you reduce? You can always reduce if you guys are using the words before, after, and while. two rules to remember. Then a few examples that we used. I think we went through all of these. We started to talk about sleeping. Well, you know, words that we can use, phrasal verbs that we can use. And we talked about some of these, having trouble sleeping. I think this is the last item that we saw on the list. If you wanna tell somebody that you're having trouble sleeping, what can you say? Be wide awake. If you are falling asleep, what can you say? Oh, I feel drowsy, right? If you're taking uh, short times with sleeping, you can say taking a nap or using a power nap. All right. From there, we kept on seeing the idioms, the phrasal verbs, uh, more idioms, and then the reasons and conditions that we saw using phrases or words like even if, considering that, as long as, provided that, unless, just in case, and we did a quick little review at the end. All right, well, that's pretty much sums it up for us in terms of what we have seen. I have another presentation with pronunciations, which I'm going to add and make one big slide for you guys so that you guys can have it and you guys can practice. Okay, so going back, we are at the final exam. And so this is the one that we're gonna do together and you guys get to help me. So what I am going to do is I'm gonna play the part and then we are gonna do the exercises together, all right? And you guys get to help me. Woohoo! Le ayudo al teacher. Va. All right. Let me just make sure that I am sharing with sound. Yes, I am. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Ready to play. Oh, no. Let me go ahead and refresh my page. Listen to a conversation between two tourists, Kathy and Tomas, then check true or false. Hi, I'm Kathy. I'm from Toronto. Where are you from? Buenos Aires. Nice to meet you, Kathy. I'm Tomas. Nice to meet you, too. How long have you been traveling in Chile? About three weeks now. What about you? I just arrived two days ago. I'm staying for a month. Good. Then you'll get to see a lot of the country. 
Yeah, I'm planning to travel from Santiago down to Patagonia. Oh, Patagonia is great. And it's the perfect time of year to hike there. It's not too cold? Not at all. Despite what some people think, Patagonia has a pretty mild climate. And it's summertime now. January and February are the months when most people visit. So there are a lot of tourists down there right now? Not really. Patagonia is far from everything. Usually only serious hikers go there. I've heard one of the best parks for hiking is Torre del Paine. Yeah, it's fantastic. And it has some of the most beautiful views in Chile. Nice. When were you there? I was there last week, but I go every year. Next summer, I'm actually going to volunteer in the park. Seriously? Oh, wow. That's so cool. Yeah, I can't wait. All right, all right. Well, that was pretty exciting. I want to go to Chile now. Ni camino aquí, ya voy a caminar a Chile. Imagine that. El teacher caminando. Huh. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Tomás arrived in Chile yesterday. True or false? False. False, dice. No. Kathy's going to travel in Chile for a month. True or false? Today, two days to Chile, teacher. Two days. Two days in My Chile? Plane. If, if we if we take Chile. a plane, if we take a plane from El Salvador went, to Chile, I went to Chile. I went. And in two that, days is that, that far? Yeah. Oh my God. It was there. Well, well, let's see. Is Kathy going to stay there for a month? True or false? True. True. They say true. How long were you there, Madeline? How long did you stay in Chile? Um. How long? In 1995. In 1995? Wow. Wow, Madeline. Yeah. Okay. All right. And did you visit for a long time? No. Only one month. Oh, that. but one month only is okay. Month. One month is okay. That's pretty nice. Yes. <laughs> I was there in, in, in San Fran Don Francisco program. I was there. Oh, that's nice. That's nice, man. I'm going to look at all the videos from 1995. Te voy a buscar. Gran stalker by el teacher. All right. Number number three. No one visits Patagonia in January or February. True or false? False. 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 Okay. Tomás goes to Torre del Pine National Park every three years. Is that true or false? False. 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 False, they say. Okay. All right, ready for the next one, ready for the next one. Here we go. Listen to a conversation between two friends, then check the best answers. <sighs> I don't get it, Chris. I'm really tired, but I'm still not sleeping well these days. That's too bad. Maybe you're staying up too late. Well, I usually watch the 11 o'clock news before I turn in, so I guess I am getting to bed pretty late. And what about caffeine? Have you been drinking coffee or tea after 5 o'clock? Hmm, I usually drink tea after dinner. Maybe it's keeping you up at night. I don't know. I feel drowsy when I go to bed, but I just can't fall asleep. And I know I'm tired because I exercise for an hour while I'm watching the news. Oh, that's it. You should probably exercise earlier. I read that some people perk up after they exercise vigorously. So it's not usually a good idea to exercise right before bed. You should finish exercising at least three hours before trying to go to sleep so that you have time to calm down first. Hmm. I've never heard that before. I guess it makes sense. So I should exercise earlier in the day and just relax after dinner? Yeah, just chill out in the evenings. Then you'll probably sleep like a log. Hey, we need to try that. All right, so the woman goes to bed early after the 11 o'clock news or immediately after dinner? After the 11 o'clock after the 11 o'clock news, okay? The woman drinks after dinner, blank. What does she drink? 
Tea. 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 She drinks tea. It's a lot of caffeine tea. in tea. Some people were saying that it's it's almost as much as, uh, if not more than, if not more than coffee. The woman normally exercises during the eleven o'clock. During, during, during the eleven o'clock. No, early in the day. Early in the day. I, we have, I know early in the day. Eleven o'clock news. During that's two for eleven o'clock. Anybody else with early in the day? I know early in the day. <laughs> Where there's two no, to one, two to beauty. one. Early in the day, we got another one. The one. <laughs> let's see, we're two to one. We need one more. Let's see. During the let's try during the eleven o'clock news, madam. And if that doesn't work, we'll try early in the day. And then number four, the man says you shouldn't exercise. For three hours. For three hours. Right before you go to bed. Whoa, we have one and one. For three hours. We need another one. <laughs> we need a breaker. For three hours. King Madise. King... Before you go to bed. There's two, two battle in the two, two against one. Let me go ahead and try it. No, if now we go back and change hours, it, I know. <laughs> we'll go, we'll change it. A ver. Oh, Ahí va. Ahí va. That's correct. No, Madeline. Yeah, they were. Yeah. So it was during the 11 o'clock news and then oh, right before you go to bed. What happened to me? What happened to me? <laughs> okay. okay. That's okay. Then That's all right, right Madeline. That's good. okay. So we got it. We got, we have A. We have completed A and let's move to B. All right. So with this one, this is the combining sentences. Combine the sentence using defining and non-defining relative clauses. Remember to use capital letters and periods. And so we have Bulgaria is a small country. Bulgaria is cheap to travel in by bus. What, what do we have? Who has already completed this one that can help us? Bulgaria is a small country and cheap to travel in by bus. And cheap I, to travel in by bus? Do you guys mm -hmm. remember this one? No? Let's, let's see what we have. I don't want to take up too much of our time. Maybe we could get we can review this one as well and go another one. So let's go, let's go, let's go with the team effort here. Woohoo! Okay. Non-defining relative clause that is the first one, right? So you take Bulgaria as a small country and Bulgaria is cheap to travel in by bus and you're going to convert it into Bulgaria is a small country that is cheap to travel in by bus. So you were close. We were really close on that one. Let me go ahead and put it. Okay. Number two, Florence is easy to navigate on foot. Florence is a small city. So for this one, there's actually two examples that we can use. Make it a little bit larger for you guys. There we go. So the first one is Florence is a small city that is easy to navigate on foot. Or you can say Florence, which is a small city is easy to navigate on foot. Oh, I'm sorry about that. It's three. Florence, which is easy to navigate on foot, is a small city. So either of those three answers should be correct. And you guys just have to use the commas and the dots. All right. Number three. My hometown is a popular tourist destination. My hometown gets crowded in the summer. 
the examples are my hometown, which is a popular tourist destination, gets crowded in the summer. Or you guys can say my hometown, which gets crowded in the summer, is a popular tourist destination. And so either of these will work. Oh, I didn't. Oh. Love these copy paste things. Number four, Istanbul has great shopping. Istanbul is the home of the Grand Bazaar. So you guys can say Istanbul, comma, which has great shopping, is the home of the Grand Bazaar. Or you can say Istanbul, which is the home of the Grand Bazaar, has great shopping. Either of those answers will be accepted. Ahí está. Moving forward a little bit. In this particular case, it's looking for modifiers. I enjoy vacationing in coastal, lovely town. Which one goes first, second, and third? Lovely coastal town is the correct answer. If you guys remember the what we were talking about here. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Where is it, where is it? Now it doesn't move. Here it is. This is what they're talking about. What goes first, second, and third, if they are used in a sentence, if you guys see them in a list right next to each other. Okay, number two, most blank intimidate me. Big with skyscrapers city. And the correct answer would be big cities with skyscrapers. Okay. Number three, I'd like to retire in a village mountain quiet. Quiet mountain village is the correct one. Mountain quiet village just doesn't make any sense. Wait, what? Mountain Quiet Village. Mm. I've always loved college towns little. The correct little college towns. Can't say college little towns either. College little towns. No. no, 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 no. When I travel, I try to avoid visiting expensive places. And this one is a little bit easier, right? It's only two. Expensive places is actually the correct way. Places expensive? No, no. We don't want to hear that. So let's go ahead and click submit and see how we turn out. Oh, what do you know? We got them right. All right. Then let me see, did I miss anything? No, we got it. All right. And then from there we did C. I think we were, I thought we had done C already. We did a little bit. No, we haven't even done it. Well, you know what? We did a little bit of it and then we, we weren't able to complete it. And then, so this one was the one that had, an, uh, there was a problem with this one. Transportation system was the problem is still the problem. So my city has great, and then you have to look at the words that have been given, and then you complete the sentence with the following words. You don't need to do anything else except add the words. So in this case, shopping for number two, nightlife climate, 
green spaces. Cost of living. Here it should have been transportation system, but it doesn't accept it. So you can just put system. And then in part two, you also get read the sentence, complete the sentence with the following phrasal verbs. So this is a little bit different because it's asking you to use a phrasal verb, an idiom or a way of saying things. Uh, meditation, meditating before I helps me to fall asleep more easily. So here, turn in, going to sleep, right? Calm down for the second one. Number three, perk up. Number four, sleep over. Oh, sleep over. Drop off and burn out. Okay. So based on the sentences, turning in, we know that is for going to sleep. Okay. After all the excitement of the fire alarm, it was hard for me to calm down. What, what is that? What are we trying to say when we say calm down or when we see calm down in this particular sentence? What are we trying to say? There was a fire alarm that went off. It could be that we got really nervous. It could be that we maybe had a shock, right? A nervous shock, nervous breakdown. And after that alarm, it was really hard for me to kind of get those nerves back to normal, right? So you can say something like calming down. How about perk up? Look at the sentence. What are we trying to say when we say perk up? Oh, I start to, all right, but I need to. When you need to perk up, let's say somebody comes to you and says, hey, you need to perk up. What are they trying to tell you? What do you need? More energy. You need to wake up. So when you guys hear perk up, more energy, more enthusiasm. It could be that maybe you had a drowsy face. So they want you to kind of get rid of that. Okay. I'm going to somebody else's house and I'm going to sleep over. What does that mean? What do you guys think it means? What can you guys say instead of sleeping over? There's, an, there's another, actually, there's another verb that you guys can use. There's another phrasal verb that you guys can use. Have you guys ever heard of spend the night? So both of these literally mean the same thing, right? You are going to sleep somewhere else that is not your house. Sleep over or spend the night. All right, and then you guys get drop off. That, that doesn't mean that you threw somebody or somebody fell. Although you can kind of look at it that way, right? I am driving the car. I'm giving you a ride. I stop at a destination. You open the door. You get out. I dropped you off. I took you from one place to the other, or I gave you a ride. You can say, I dropped you off. Last one is burnout. Now, this doesn't mean that you're going to combust, 
right? You're not going to explode into a ball of fire. What is going to happen when you burn out? What do you guys think when we say burn out? What can we say? I am exhausted. 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 That is it, Maricela. Yes, you are completely exhausted. You are burnt out, right? And actually, uh, there's people that say that you can actually die from working too much from exhaustion you can actually die so you have to be very careful with that all right and then so let me see let's submit of course we got it right yeah all right so for you guys tomorrow if you guys want to go through two of those we can um we can review it and then the final conversations final goodbyes preparation for the next module Hopefully everybody, you know, completed their documentation. Everybody needs to reach that 80% on the, on the, you know, on the platform. And so that's the idea. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you guys three minutes back of your night. Teacher, yes, Madeline. Teacher, I, I need the information. I need it. Please send me a, in my, to my email. Please. What do you need, Madeline? What do you need? The, you you show you show the information all the hour. This I need it. Yes, all. This I need yes, it. I'm gonna send it. Yes. Remember, I'm going to add the other presentation, and then I'm gonna send you guys one big slide for you guys, so that you guys can use it for practicing. Yes, Thank you, sir. Yes. When teacher. Well, if you do, you want it like this because it's missing some stuff. Do you do you want it? Do you want it as I have it right now? I need to study. Okay, I can send it to you right now as is. Okay, let's because do that then. Only, only to the only the class uh, is is uh, uh, only the uh, only the class I cannot understand all. But okay. if you send me the information, the class, I, I study and understand. Okay, let me, I'll send it to you like this then. Okay, Madeline, I'll do it. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. Help. No problem, Maddie, no problem. Anytime. Everybody have a good night. See you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Thank you.